just last month, the White House actually held a listening session on combating human trafficking. Our next guest actually spoke directly to the president, sharing their views as advocates and survivors. Let me introduce you to them. Julie Cordua is the executive director of Thorn, which uses technology to fight child exploitation. And Holly Austin Gibbs is a survivor of child trafficking who is now working uh, with victims. So, so Julie, I want to begin with you because the internet, the internet is the largest marketplace for buying and selling children in this country. Just explain to us how can technology be used to fight child exploitation, especially given that the internet is a huge part of the problem. Yes, so the the power of technology really lies in the hands of who's using it, right? Mm -hmm. So it was about five years ago where we saw that technology was being used to exploit children um, to this degree and wasn't really yet deployed in full force as part of the solution. So that is what Thorne does as a nonprofit. We say we channel the best and brightest minds in technology and the most advanced technology and the companies behind it on behalf of the most vulnerable children um, in the country and the world. Uh, so if you think about how can it be a part of the solution, mm -hmm. um, now that uh, you know technology has democratized abuse is what we say, it makes it much more easy to participate in the buying and selling of children in the spread of child abuse material, but it also leaves evidence. Every ad, every image, every video, every mention of abuse online is a piece of evidence. And so what technology can do is when you look at all of that holistically, you can start to identify uh, the factors that might signal when an ad represents a child. Mm -hmm. You can help law enforcement focus in. If we have 150,000 escort ads posted every single day in this country, how can law enforcement focus on the ones that may be children and technology allows you to do that you can start to learn what the ads look like when a child is being sold and you can use that to prioritize your cases for law enforcement and by prioritization you can reduce the time and trauma that these kids have if you can get to them faster if you can give them a positive mm -hmm. touch point um, then the likelihood that they may come out of the life sooner uh -huh. instead of staying in the life for years um, is is much more likely. So the focus is really on tracking down these children as quickly as possible but given just how large the illicit material is out there how much of a dent is technology actually making? So um, I can speak specifically to some of the tools that we have um, out in the market. So we have one uh, sex trafficking investigations tool being used across the country right now uh, in the U.S. And we know, for instance, that in the last 12 months alone, it has helped identify over 6,000 victims of trafficking, a third of which were children. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, or, or I guess just as important, um, is that it reduces investigation time by nearly 60%. So when when you're talking about massive amounts of cases, mm -hmm. a limited amount of law enforcement who can work on this, channeling them and helping them identify more children faster um, is really important. And then also um, working with Polaris and the National Human Trafficking mm -hmm. Hotline, able to integrate uh, text and, and, messaging. And, and yes. Julie, I just have to I just have to bring in um, Holly because yes. Holly, you are a survivor of, of trafficking. Just explain to our audience, as someone who has gone through it and witnessed the toll it takes on your spirit firsthand, as someone who's gone through that, how do you even begin to heal after something like that? How, at what point do you even begin to smile again? Sure. Thanks for inviting me, Zane. Mm -hmm. I am happy to be here. Um, like most victims of human trafficking, I was a vulnerable kid. I was vulnerable. So at the age of 14, um, I was angry. I was insecure. I was um, struggling with the transition between middle and high school. And that's when I met a man who took advantage of that vulnerability. Um, I was forced into prostitution within hours of running away with this person who pretended to be a friend, who pretended to be someone offering me a better life. And um, within days, I was recovered by law enforcement. 
Excuse me, from there I encountered healthcare and a number of people who were trying to help me, but often getting it wrong. So right in that time frame when I was supposed to be healing, when I was supposed to be uh, overcoming, I was often feeling um, just as traumatized by the people trying to help me. And so today, as a survivor, I work with Dignity Health, one of the largest healthcare systems in the nation. We've created a program to educate our staff and equip our staff to appropriately respond to victims of human trafficking, both sex and labor trafficking victims, to identify and empower victims to so begin to heal, to so begin to, to recover. Right, so Holly, how, how do doctors and nurses um, identify victims of, of sex trafficking? What are the red flags that, that we all should be looking out for? At Dignity Health, you know, this is a public health crisis. So we're responding to a need in which... Um, Victims of, of sex and labor trafficking are, are coming into our healthcare systems in any number of ways. So yes, there are common red flags to watch out for, accompanied by a controlling companion, signs of medical uh, or, or physical neglect. Um, but a, a person can come into our healthcare system as a victim of human trafficking because they have a cut on their foot, because they were assaulted, because they're having a baby. There's so many different ways that a victim can encounter health care that we're educating staff. We're very focused on educating staff on what human trafficking means overall so that we can look for all the nuances that may present in a victim's history. All right, because there's so many misconceptions out there. A lot of people just don't really know that much uh, about it. So education is really important, okay? Uh, ladies, we do have to leave it there. Holly Gibbs, Julia Cadora, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.